Hi, Norm Norlander here. I'd like to show you my version of a series of still water midge patterns tied with a Norvice. Here in the Pacific Northwest, midges are really an important part of our still water fly fishing. I'm going to demonstrate several patterns depicting four different phases of this insect's transformation from a larva to an adult. Midges are available pretty much year round, in, at least in one phase or another, but they vary greatly in size and color. Now, what I'm going to show you is kind of a generic pattern for each of these important insect phases. We're going to take a look first at this, which is often referred to as a bloodworm. This would be the larval stage of the midges, more properly called coronamids. This would be the pupa. This is the emerging, or, or the version between the larva and the emerger. This is the type of uh, midge or coronamid pattern you'll see most widely used. We also want to take a look at how to uh, tie uh, what's called an emerger. This is where the pupa goes between being a, a pupa and the eventually the adult, the dry fly that we all love to fish so much. Here it'll be a griffith snap. For the series of flies that we're going to tie today, these midges, I'm going to use the fine point conversion on the Norvice. Here's how we install it. First, we remove the inline jaw assembly, a little set screw there, and that's all there is to that. We put on our fine point assembly, tighten the set screw down. Now, replace the rear hub, remove the O-ring, slide the hub off, and replace it with the fine point hub. This has a little turning arm on it, and you'll see a little bit later just how that works. Put that O-ring back on. Now we're ready to go. Let's start with the larval stage of our midge series. Now these can occur in huge numbers in still waters and at times become a really important part of our trout's food source. Now the midge larvae, larvae start out very tiny. It's only the latter stages where it becomes practical to imitate them. And typically we do this with size 12 to 18 hooks. Now today we're going to use a size 14 hook. It's one of these little beauties right here. We're going to use a material called liquid lace. It's a hollow tube that can be stretched quite fine. I'm going to use a little bit of marabou for what are called the pro legs. We often think it was the tail of a, of a midge larvae. And then for the head end of it, we're going to use a little bit of rabbit fur for a dub head. Okay. We're going to start out by placing the hook in the vise. You'll see the advantage of using the fine point conversion for these scud hooks. This is where we're going to want to tie down around the bend of the hook down in this area. Okay, first thing we're going to do is attach our thread. In this case, it's some 8 odd red thread. Take a couple turns like so. And then for these pro legs, as they're called, or tail end of the thing, I'm going to take just a little bit of this blood marabou. Now don't cut it with your scissors. What you want to do is hold it like this and break it against your thumbnail. That'll give you kind of a tapered effect on the tail. It looks a whole lot better than a, where you cut it off with the scissors. It looks like a paintbrush sticking back there. Okay, take a couple nice, hard, firm wraps like so. And then we can trim out the waste part of our marabou. And don't have to tie all the way back yet. Let's bring our thread forward very carefully. It's a lot easier if you just hold it and turn the vise like this. Okay, and we'll spin this all the way up to the front of the hook. That dresses the hook. Okay. Next, take a little piece of this liquid lace, tie it in right at the eye of the hook, Not like so, nice and firm. Get your bobbin out of the way. Now use the friction clamp up here and then we can rotate the vise, stretching that liquid lace nice and tight, edge to edge as we work our way back. 
Okay, we're back here at the point of the hook, and you're going to start to want to weave that back and forth like I'm doing here. This allows you to tie down around the bend of the hook, like so. And again, very, very precisely positioning that material. Okay. And maybe about one more turn back here, about like that. Okay. Now we're going to reverse our direction. And I'm going to turn this, leave a little bit of a gap between subsequent turns. That'll simulate the segmentation that's noticeable on these little beauties. All the way up to the front, lock it in place, bob and slides over, and we tie off our liquid lace. Okay. Secure it with a half hitch, stretch it, slide your little scissors up there and that'll clip it clean. The head end of this fly, or in this case a worm really, we're going to use a, just a little rabbit fur dubbing. Spin that on your thread. You don't want to use very much now, it's pretty tiny. And I'm going to take and rotate this. About like so, very, very carefully placing that material like this, just right where you want it. Okay? And again, we'll secure it with a half hitch. In this case, we'll come back and whip finish right over the top of our half hitch, like so. Trim off our working thread. Now, that tail is way too much, so again, I'm going to use my thumbnail right here and break that short, like so. This is about what those little beauties really look like. You can see that really not much to them, but they really do work at times, guys. Give them a try.